Welcome for our service this morning, whether you're here or whether you're with us online. Uh, we're glad you're with us in whatever way you are. Uh, those with us online, we have links for you to follow along. And for those of you who are here with us, you can follow along in your bulletin. Uh, or if you want to use our, one of our new prayer books, our service starts there on page 323. 323 in the Book of Romans. So we'll go ahead and get started now with this fourth Sunday after the event. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be the kingdom now and forever. We continue now with the call of for purity. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are heard, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee, and worthily magnify thy holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ saith. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. 
This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. We continue now with the Gloria. Glory be to God on high, and on earth peace, good will towards men. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee, we glorify thee. We give thanks to thee for thy great glory. O Lord God, heavenly King, God, Father Almighty, O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, we receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For thou only art holy, thou only art the Lord, thou only, O Christ, the Holy Ghost, our most high and glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you and with us here. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, who didst govern all things in heaven and earth, mercifully hear the supplications of thy people and in our time grant us thy peace through jesus christ our lord who liveth and reigneth with thee and the holy spirit one god forever and ever amen. amen please be seated for the readings the first reading is from the prophet micah hear what the lord says rise plead your case before the mountains and let the hills hear your voice hear you mountains the controversy of the lord and your, you enduring foundations of the earth. For the Lord has a controversy with his people, and he will contend with Israel. O my people, what have I done to you? In what have I wearied you? Answer me. For I brought you up from the land of Egypt and redeemed you from the house of slavery. And I sent before you Moses, Aaron, and Miriam. O my people, remember now what King Balaam of Moab devised, what Balaam, son of Baar, answered him. And what happened from Shittim to Gilgal, that you may know the saving acts of the Lord. With what shall I come before the Lord and bow myself before God on high? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams, with tens of thousands of rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? He has told you, O mortal, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you but to do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with your God? The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be so God. God. Please read responsibly with me from Psalm 15. Lord, who may dwell in your tabernacle? Who may abide upon your holy hill? Whoever leads a lifeless life and does what is right, who receives the truth from his heart. There is no bow upon his tongue. He does no evil to his friend. He does not keep contempt upon his neighbor. And in his sight we are good to but in the honor to those who fear the Lord. He has sworn to do no wrong and does not take back his word. He does not give his money and hope for the name, nor does he take pride in his Whoever does these things shall never be overthrown. The second reading is from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. The message about the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and the discernment of the discerning I will thwart. Where is the one who is wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world did not know God through wisdom, God decided through the foolishness of our proclamation to save those who believe. For Jews demand signs and Greeks desire wisdom. 
but we proclaim Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles. But to those who are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. For God's foolishness is wiser than human wisdom, and God's weakness is stronger than human strength. Consider your own call, brothers and sisters. Not many of you were wise by human standards. Not many were powerful. Not many were of noble birth. But God chose what is foolish in the world to shame the wise. God chose what is weak in the world to shame the strong. God chose what is low and despised in the world, things that are not, to reduce to nothing things that are, so that no one might boast in the presence of God. He is the source of your life in Christ Jesus, who became for us wisdom from God, and righteousness and sanctification and redemption, in order that, as it is written, let the one who boasts, boast in the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory Glory be to Lord. Lord. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted, for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you, and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. When I was growing up in Birmingham, I was fortunate enough to take classical guitar lessons from a wonderful guitarist, David Walker. And not only was David accomplished as a guitarist, his family had been heavily involved in the civil rights movement as well. I was fortunate to be able to sit down with his parents while they were still in this world and talk with them about their experience. They were there the day before and the day after Bloody Sunday in Selma. And David's father was also a musician and was known to throw in a gospel tune every now and then when he was playing at the local country club. David's father was also later inducted into the Gospel Music Hall of Fame, not just for his music, but for his work in the Civil Rights Movement. At the same time, there were a lot of difficulties that the Walberts faced. That included the clan burning crosses in their yard. 
I'm not sure I fully realized the full impact that their work in the movement had in their lives and in their relationships with others until my senior year in high school. Now, at this point, I was a less than stellar guitar student. I finished my college applications at this point and was exhausted. So there was one lesson I had with David where I apologized for my lack of practicing and blamed it on senioritis. Now, when I said this, David told me, yeah, I wouldn't really understand what that's like. And curious, I asked him why that was the case. He told me that by his senior year, he was already well done with school at that point because all the people in his class because of his involvement not just his parents but his own personal involvement in the civil rights movement he'd been labeled as a communist now what david and his family did was very much the right thing to do and we know this looking back on the history of that time. But it came at a personal and high cost to David and his family. It came at the cost of the right relationships with others, the relationships with others who should have been friends to David. That David is sadly not alone in paying this cost. And that's what we hear in our lessons today. So we started out in what we heard from Scripture, what we heard from the Tanakh, the Old Testament. We learn how we are supposed to be in this world. David, in the psalm, speaks of God's desire that we live a blameless life in the Lord's name. And that we do what is right and that we speak the truth from our own heart the prophet micah says this in a slightly different way by asking this question <clears throat> shall i come before the lord with burnt offerings he has told you O mortal what is good and what does the lord require of you but to do justice, to love kindness, to walk humbly with your God. Yet, as we learn in our later lessons today, the world does not like this from us. It does not like us acting in the ways that David and Micah are laying out. Paul tells the Corinthians this morning, the message about the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. In other words, the wisdom of the church is derided by the world. Jesus, too, warns us of this same thing. And he tells his listeners that people will revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Yet in spite of the cost, these are the people who God favors. Jesus throughout the Beatitudes references those who the world sees is weak. He speaks of the poor in spirit, the mourners, the hungry, the merciful, the pure in heart, the peacemakers, the persecuted, and the reviled. All these are the ones who God loves. All these are the ones who Jesus 
lessons. Paul too points out that God chose what is weak in the world, doing so in order to shame the strong. What God values is not the same thing that the world holds dear. We are called to follow God's standards and not human ones, as Paul makes clear. Again, being what God values means that the world will revile us. As Jesus further says, in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you, they will persecute you as well. In the same way that we see the prophets reviled and persecuted, we see even more so with Jesus. For Jesus himself was put to death on the cross by the world for speaking and revealing the truth. While following God has a cost for us in this world, Jesus invites us to look heavenward, to look toward the kingdom of God. He calls on us to rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. We may not always have others on our side, but God always has our back, and that is the only thing that matters. Standing up for what is good and true and just it's never easy. The world won't allow it to be so for us. Yet God gives us the one thing the world cannot, hope in and through the resurrection. Through God, we are transformed to be how we always wanted to be, at least deep within our hearts. Through God, we receive the salvation we could never obtain on our own. Through God, we can have peace and harmony in ourselves and with each other in a way that we never truly could in this world. In this life, siding with God is never easy. Yet it is what is right. If what we desire is the admiration and fellowship of others, then God's way will seem foolish, as Paul declares. If we desire to be good, just, and merciful, then God's way is the only way for us. And for that, we can be glad indeed. Now please stand as you are able.
And let us affirm our faith together in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made. Who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for our sin and conscious life. He suffered and was buried. And on the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of the Father. And he shall come again with glory. The judge of the plague and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I will be in the Holy Ghost, the Lord, and giver of life, the Christian of the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who is saved by the prophets. And I will be the one holy Catholic and Catholic Church. I acknowledge one baptism for remission of sins, and I will look for the resurrection of the dead. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ's church and the world. Almighty and ever-living God, who in thy holy word has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men, receive these our prayers which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord. And grant that all those who do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops and other ministers, especially Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, Daniel, our bishop, Trey, our priest, as well as Francis, Bishop of Rome, Bartholomew, Archbishop of Constantinople, and all other denominational leaders, that they may, both by their life and doctrine, set forth thy true and lively word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. We beseech thee also so to rule the hearts of those who bear the authority of government in this and every land especially Joe, our president, Josh, our governor, John, our mayor, and all our local elected officials, that they may be led to wise decisions and right actions for the welfare and peace of the world. Open, O oh Lord, the eyes of all people to behold thy gracious hand in all thy works, that rejoicing in thy whole creation, they may honor thee with their substance and be faithful stewards of thy bounty. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O oh Lord, to comfort and succor, Alexandra, Isabella, Linda, Liz, Shauna, Tammy, Christine, Maisie, Patty, Maddie, Rich, Andrew, Tom, Gresco family, Phil and Sue, Ike, Claire, Gloria, Sharon, John and Pat, Lauren, Logan, JJ, Jennifer, Brittany, Debbie, Kazan, Fei Young, Ron, Frank, Frank, Victor, Fran, Liza, Lee, Joan, Ken, Marie, Ed, Susie, Art, Harriet, Jim, Barbara, Veronica, Amy, Rhonda, Robbie, Rihanna, Kate, Sharon, Laura, Barb, Lou, Anna, Amelia, Jerry, Michelle, Susie, Becky, Tara, Paula, Alma, Pamela, Dawn M, Layla, Tony, Key and Tina, Nancy, Elizabeth R, Bob, Elena, Lucille, Jimmy, Stephanie, Jimmy, Anthony, Laura, Blake, Cameron, Mike, Sally, Ben, Helen, and Paula. 
and all those who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. We give thanks and pray for those celebrating birthdays this week, Elise and Dolores. We pray for the children, teens, and college students of this parish and for those serving in the military. We pray for the life and witness of our companion parish, St. Mark AME Zion Church Newtown and St. Paul's Town. Lord, look graciously on my church and so guide the minds of those who shall choose a rector for this parish that we may receive a faithful pastor who will care for my people and equip us for our ministries. We offer up any other prayers at this time, whether aloud or in our hearts. We pray for the victims of violence in this land and throughout the world. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed in this life in thy faith and fear, especially Kathy Jacobs and veterans Johnny J. Jenkins, John Stephen Nager, Richard McVeigh, and Christian martyrs throughout the world, beseeching you to grant them continual growth in thy love and service, and to grant us a grace so to follow the good examples of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Joseph, her most holy spouse, Luke, our patron, and of all thy saints, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant these our prayers, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Amen. Taking a moment of silence for reflection, let us humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God. <clears throat> Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men. We acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time have previously have committed, by thought, word, and deed, against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We have mercy to repent, and our heart is sorry for these our pursuings. Remember to send the freedom of sins to us, the burden of heaven is intolerable. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, for thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake. Forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may have a hereafter to serve and please thee in the goodness of life, to the honor and glory of thy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all of those who with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hear the word of God to all who truly turn to him. And unto me, all you that travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, to the end that all that believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. This is a true saying and worthy of all men to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the perfect offering for our sins, and not for ours only, but for the sin of the whole world. Now please stand as you are able. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And with my spirit. spirit. Show one another a sign of peace. And peace to all who are with us online as well. You may be seated. <clears throat> Big thanks to everyone who participated in our lector and intercessor training last week. And if you haven't gotten a chance, the videos for that are online. So please look at those at the leisure. Um, after this service, or 
After the 10 a.m. service, we um, are doing another formation that's kind of related. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, the Eucharist and uh, just do kind of a brief look through of why we do what we do when we do it. So that'll be made available online as well. So uh, please look out for that later on too. Next week, uh, we do have our annual parish meeting that will be after our 10 a.m. service. However, we uh, will have um, a Zoom option for that with our normal 10 a.m. Uh, service link. So if you can't be here in person, uh, you can be here for that. Um, you, you can be here virtually for that, or uh, we will have the reports printed out as well. So please join us, or if you can, um, just let myself or Susan know, and uh, we'll help uh, get you the documents uh, for that. That's all of the main announcements. Um, we do have our offertory plate in the back, um, so don't forget about that. And those with us online, don't forget about our tidally option that we have now for online giving. So you find the link for that in the description for this video, as well as pretty much everywhere that we are online. Uh, also, please don't forget to sign in as well. Now, as we move into Holy Communion, please know that all baptized Christians are warmly invited to receive, and if there's any reason you wish not to receive, you can simply cross your arms. That will be a sign to me that you would like a blessing instead. And now walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God. We now continue with Eucharistic Prayer 1, found in your bulletins, or on page 333 in the Book of Common Prayer. Please stand as you are able. <clears throat> The Lord be with you. And with Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is very neat, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, everlasting God. Because in the mystery of the Word made flesh, 
Though it's caused the new light to shine in our hearts, to give the knowledge of thy glory, the face of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and Lord. Therefore, with angels, and archangels, with all of them, laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 for the thou of thy tender mercy didst give thy Son, only Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made thereby his one oblation of himself once offered, a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute, and in his holy gospel command us to continue, perpetual memory of that his precious death and sacrifice, until his coming again. For the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of us. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many, the remission of sins. For this is all to see shall drink it. And remember this in me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, according to the institution of thy dearly beloved Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, we thy humble servants, who celebrate and make here before thy divine majesty, with these thy holy gifts, which we now offer unto thee, the memorial thy Son hath commanded us to make. That in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, rendering unto thee most hearty thanks for the innumerable benefits procured unto us by the same. We most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us, of thy almighty goodness, much sake to bless and sanctify with thy word and holy spirit. These thy gifts and creatures of bread and wine, that we receiving them according to thy Son, our Savior Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and wine. We earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, was humbly beseeching thee to grant it by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood. We and all thy we obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present it to thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee. Humbly beseeching thee that we and all others who shall be partakers of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of his Son, Jesus Christ, be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and made one body with him, as he may dwell in us and we in him. Although we are worthy of our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this our bounden duty and service, knowing our merits, pardoning our offenses, through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with thee, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. Now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, Power and glory forever and ever. Amen.
Hallelujah. Christ, our Passover, once for all, is sacrificed for us. The Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Have mercy upon us. The Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Have mercy upon us. The Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Grant us our peace. We do not presume to come to this thy table of merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table. But thou art the same Lord, whose property is always at our mercy. Grant us therefore, grace, Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him and be in us. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith. The service now continues with the post-communion prayer found in your bulletin or on page 339 in the Book of Common Prayer. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank thee for that thou hast seed us in these holy mysteries, 
the spiritual food, the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And thus assure us thereby that thy favor and witness towards us, and that we are very members and corporate in the mystical body of thy Son, the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs to hope of thy everlasting name. And we humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship, and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us all. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom we be in the Holy Ghost, be all honor and glory, world without end. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord shine the light of his countenance upon you and give you peace. May the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you this day and always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Since I'm the tech person today, I'll go up and turn everything off and then come down to greet you all. Thank you for being here this morning.